G'day guys, and today I'm going to review the game which is between Geelong and the Western Bulldogs to the Cats by five points after the siren job from Gary Rowan, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, got us over the line in an absolutely crazy game. Oh, what a win. What a win. They, they seem to find a way, the Cats, and I tipped them and I knew it was going to be a very close and very tough game. Full disclosure, I saw five minutes of this game. Um, I had a 50th, uh, so I was attending that. Um, yeah, therefore, obviously didn't see as, um, yeah, I suppose <laughs> the entirety of the game or most of the game, I should say, saw, saw a little bit late. Um, so my review will be not, uh, <laughs> not probably in depth as it usually is, but I'll give it a crack. That's for sure. Um, yeah, what a, what a crazy game. It was an absolute slog fest and I, I felt kind of guilty not having to go through all the pain that uh, it would have been watching it on the telly. Just an absolute tug of war. I was sort of keeping a little bit of an eye on the, the scores and it seemed like goal for goal that the lead changed 14 times and it was just a topsy-turvy game. It was an absolute arm wrestle for the entire night and um, after the siren was where when it was decided and we knew going in it was going to be an incredibly tough game and dogs are really well rounded in the contest and they're, they're spread on the outside it's really good and up forward they're, they're pretty dangerous and as we know their defensive uh, stocks are, are pretty decent as well but yeah it was definitely tough <clears throat> early going not much scoring going on. I think it was one goal four for a little while uh, into the second term so yeah it was probably would have been a tough game to watch early on but definitely after quarter time lifted in intensity and Scoreboard pressure-wise um, on both counts, and yeah, obviously the Cats led at half time and pretty much led at all the breaks minus the uh, minus the starting piece, and um, we were able to find a way at the end. And I was looking scary late because it, it just looked like it was so far away from our goal. But I thought there's still enough time for a crazy, you know, Daniel Menzel kick inside the corridor uh you know in 2018 when when we beat the d's after the siren at uh Kidinia park so uh, how many times we went after the siren as well uh, i reckon you know, billy brownless in 1994 tommy hawkins in 2012 Tui in 2018 and um I'm pop i feel like i'm missing even more taylor had a chance to beat the togs after the siren he, he unfortunately missed and obviously the dogs so super brutal for the dogs to be honest, they, they were incredibly brave, inc incredibly tough, and you know, either team could have uh, you know taken the four points. And yeah, the cats uh, at the Cattery were able to get the job done in what was you know a really tough match. Our intercept mark game again was um, exceptional. I believe we took about twenty three intercept marks. I think we took about sixteen or so against Port Adelaide. So our ability to win the ball back from the opposition's been quite commendable and pretty special. That sort of stuff is what builds your, um, I suppose, ability to s get scoring chains going when you can repel from, uh, you know, defence and get it back from the opposition because we know the Dogs are a really good side in terms of getting it out of the contest and that's that's their bread and butter. They, you know, they, they make you work pretty hard for it. And, um, yeah, oh, obviously that, that moment late was so the Wayne Harms whack and then uh, Jeremy Cameron obviously got it out. Danger field to... You know, Dalhouse and Cordy, great pressure from Cordy, uh, Dalhouse on Cordy, I should say, and it's Isaac Smith had a perfect kick to Rowan, and I thought, well, not all, all, as long as he doesn't miss the lot, we're, we're absolutely good as gold. So, and um, it looked like it was going a little bit to the right, and I was a bit nervous, but uh, it it faded back beautifully, and yeah, fair to say, I was up and about, and. Uh, it was a good five minutes to see, I guess. It was, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough watching on, but not as tough as uh, everyone that endured the entire game. And it sounded like it was a very taxing game and one of those games where you age five years <laughs> watching watching on. But you know, the, the dogs, are they're a tough, tough mob and they'll definitely be up there in the top four, top six this year. Probably top four, I'd say, with the way that they... Go about it. They've obviously lost a couple of games to some key clubs. I think the Tigers, the Cats. Um, I'm trying to think if another club's got them, but might come to me, uh, you know, when I'm sleeping in the middle of the night or something. But if we look, look at a bit of the stats, disposal-wise, we seem to always outpossess the 
opposition had some good supply up forward uh, in terms of inside 50s free kicks the dogs got a got a couple in there i obviously didn't see the game but i'd say a lot of that would just be first into the contest and also heard that there's some interesting decisions maybe as well but uh yeah i'll, I'll try and stay out of the umpire debate uh won the hit outs apparently and doggies won the clearances i feel like we usually win them more of about even but yeah dogs are pretty hard to beat there contested ball though is the key generally when the cats win it they win the match and uh, so so we did and had more more uncontested ball as well makes sense since we have more of the footy in general and dogs turned over a little bit more we're pretty good in the air once again 19 contested marks so we took we've taken 40 contested marks in the last two weeks and i think we've taken 40 intercept marks in the last two weeks as well so been crazy on that front uh, very good aerialists the cats and that was without Lockie henderson so i think it was a laid out and tackle wise we out tackled them which is really good so that must mean the pressures um and the mindset from the cattery is very good a uh, bit of running bounce and yeah one percent is doggies uh did well there so that's a bit of a rundown of the game uh we look, look a bit of the stats uh the votes are gonna be tough for me to do but i think i've got a good idea of where i'm going with them so Tom Stewart uh, gets the three votes. I think that's universally accepted. Uh, 27 disposals, 13 marks. What a man he is. Um, I think 10 of those were intercept marks as well. So he's not just getting those chippy sideways. He's winning the ball back off the opposition. And he's just been, he might win our best and fairest. Uh, the way he's been playing, he's just been absolutely exceptional. He's, I think he stopped a goal as well um, on the right on the goal line based on um, one of the highlights I saw. So. Yeah, he, he's just been absolutely outstanding. I think if Corey Enright can win best and fairest and he's playing in a similar role and similar mould, I think he can. He, he might be winning it this year. It's definitely possible. Two votes I heard on the grapevine that Selwood was really good. Um, he got the 29 and kicked a goal. Six tackles, 10 clearances. That's big, big time from Joel. Um, yeah, played played a really pivotal role as he does and he's, he's the heart and soul of the club and... He's one tough man. He personifies the football club. And also, I was yeah, got, got worded in that Jack Henry was exceptional as well. He took nine marks. I've just got to find him first. So I know he's a, bit, a little bit down the list. Um, nine marks, 12 touches. Again, yeah, you could argue his influence is quite influential alongside... You know, a Tom Stewart, just that ability to win the ball back from the opposition. And um, he's come on the leaps and bounds this year. And he, might, he might even get an All-Australian jacket, uh, whether he's on the bench or in the squad. He's been unbelievable. Unbelievable. We'll go for the rest. And again, I didn't see all of the game. Saw five minutes of the game, heard bits and pieces. Thought I'd uh, at least get some content out because I'm probably not going to watch the full... Uh, I'll definitely watch the... The mini series, uh, yeah, the, the highlights package that they sort of put together. It's like a mini game, but I don't think I'll be watching the full game. Um, just I'm sure things will just pop up on the weekend as they do. Uh, two goals to minute goal, 27 touches. Uh, he's he's put together a nice season as well. Parfit 22 and a goal, nine tackles. He he's the tackle maestro. Smith's been probably one of the recruits of the year. 30 touches and seven marks in there as well. He just finds the footy and uses it well. Blitzars, I heard he was on Bonton Pally at some stage. And, uh, yeah, he got a bit of the ball and, and plenty of hit-outs as well. So, did okay in the ruck. I, 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 won't, I won't say it now. I'll say it very shortly. Guthrie uh, usually gets a bit more of the ball. Come back in. Um, yeah, obviously, just needs a little bit of time first and foremost. And Dalhouse got 21 touches and six tackles and a goal. That's better. That is, I can accept that. That is fine. Those are good stats, and that should be your, your normal Dalhouse. <laughs> good stuff. Tui got 27. He racked it up as well. Um, Atkins, 19 off half back. Don't feel a little bit inaccurate, um, but was really good late. Obviously, with a few plays there, three behinds, but 26 touches next to his name. Close uh, 18 and a goal uh, was really good. Mentioned about Henry. Rowan, the the, the match winner, um, excellent finish. And 
his set shot routine is just phenomenal. It, it just finds a way. It really finds a way. And um, he, he won us the game off his own boot right at the very end. Uh, Buse got 15 um, down back. Cameron kicked 2-2. Two, two, not too bad from 15 touches. Got a bit of the footy working up and down the ground. He's such a workhorse. Saw the vision throughout the week where he just runs from full back to full forward and yeah, just finds a way to out, out uh, run his man. Radigalier, nine touches and a goal. Uh, Knuckle, I'm not sure if he was a medical sub, but he got 16. Hawkins kicked a goal, 13, well held. Had a bit of a neck injury by the looks of it. Higgins, uh, a lot of handballs. He's supposed to be a bit more of a kicker, but yeah, he's pretty lucky to be in the side. Uh, O'Connor, a little bit quiet, but he might have been playing down in the back pocket, potentially. Um, Cole Jasney got a little bit of the ball, not much. And Duncan went off with a knee injury, ball reports. I could be wrong with that, but let's just we'll, we'll just go with it for now. And he gained 14 metres for, for his football side, and he spent 6% time on ground. Uh, so that means Duncan's probably out, so Narkle should get a spot. If he wasn't the medical sub, I could maybe validate that. Um, yeah, so Duncan will probably, I would doubt he'd be playing next week. Uh, Higgins will probably just stay in by default. I think he could definitely go back to the VFL and uh, earn his stripes again, or his hoops, rather. Um, Radigalier, we, we, I think, uh, so Bruce, I believe, kicked three, if I go to both. Bruce kicked three. I, the last three or so weeks, or a little bit more, we the big forwards have kind of got a hold of us, and they I know the game's opened up a little bit, but it's never really happened <laughs> over the last probably five or ten years, to be honest. And, um, yeah, a few just a few forwards kicking a few. You know, Charlie Dixon kicked four. Bruce kicked three. One goal, five to Max King. If he kicks straight, you know, that's four to six goals. Um, we need to play blitz halves down back. Um, I understand him playing him in the ruck at times, but play radically in a couple of years' time. Our window is right now and maybe 2022. Just worry, play him in, P could be our best 22 in 2023. You have to play Reece Stanley or you're nuts. He, he was really good in the 2020 final series. He had one not great game and, and then he played well on Grundy and did a great job and radical just gets a go for just because Scotty loves him for some reason, so yeah, that that bit irks me. But I don't know. See how they go. I just want frantically to be injured. Uh, we have got we got. <coughs> gosh, my voice is dead. I've done a lot of talking tonight. We have Mize in the, the VFL. Hopefully, he comes back soon. He might be a chance. See how that pans out. <coughs> um, yeah, there's not a lot of changes that really come to mind, but I would have taken one out of these two, uh, Port Adelaide and the Western Bulldogs. We, we snuck over the line, and I'll take the win. Well done by the Cats, and it doesn't get any easier because week after we've got the Lions. This one's at the Gabba. I'm probably leaning. We've got a good record against Brisbane, generally speaking, no matter where we play. But, yeah, if it was a close one at the start of the year, we're playing a lot better footy than since the start of the year. Uh, I'd be leaning towards Brisbane, but also think that we're a great chance to win as well. Um, they'll be seething from the prelim final loss. Of, obviously, that will definitely be front of mind. I think it's more more for them to play for. I feel like we're due for a bit of a loss as well. We're playing some good footy. Um, maybe the dry conditions might suit us. Who knows? But, yeah, so it'll be a Thursday night game. It might be a bit dewy, but, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um yeah, I wouldn't say I fear the Lions too crazily, but again, if they get on their terms and we let them play a certain way, they'll definitely be tough to beat. But anyway, it was the Cats by five points. That's my review from seeing five minutes of the game, so not too shabby, I think. But yeah, obviously, uh, Scotty might have some thoughts on, on the game. And I loved, I loved his reaction at the end. He was like a supporter a proud coach and a proud dad all in one somehow. So it was an excellent win to get the job done. Cats by five points. Um, guys, hope you've enjoyed the crazy review from, uh, you know, 
<laughs> seeing not a lot of the game, hearing a bit about the game and why not. So thanks for sticking around, guys. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe away, all that amazing stuff. Uh, appreciate you all jumping on board and I'll see you on the next video.